I will not be before you long to our presiding prelate, Bishop Sherman Watkins. God bless you. Love you so much. And to Bishop T.D. Jakes, my friend, pastor, my brother, to all the other bishops and pastors, to the saints of God, and to our friends, we give God's name praise. The Temple of Praise that drove all the way up here just to hang out with us. God bless you. My two baby girls in here tonight, they're somewhere. Micah and Jamie, where you at? There they go. Hey, y'all. <laughs> God bless you. I want to talk to you tonight from the book of uh, First Kings. Kings, I've been listening to it all week long. But I'm going to look at 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 1. And the Bible says, And Elijah, you may be seated. something that God has been trying to tell us throughout the entire week he's been talking uh, to us I've heard Elijah I've heard first Kings 18 I've heard them talking about different things I said Lord have mercy they all in my message but I'm going to stand here and declare I've got something that I saw you know how you see something and I saw something in the scripture that I think is going to help us, especially the pastors and the bishops and the leaders, because oftentimes they forget that we're human too. <clears throat> they forget that we have feelings. The scripture talks about Elijah. He's introduced to us first time in the Holy Writ in 1 Kings 17. He comes on the scene. The Bible tells us he's a Tishbite. From a place called Tishba. He talks about where he's from and oftentimes you hear about Elijah and different things. It's good preaching material. He talks about him going to tell Ahab that it's not going to rain for three years. He said, he said, until I say so. He walks into the palace at Shushan, one of the most decorated, ornate palaces in the Old Testament. Beautiful building, marble everywhere. It was a wonderful place just to walk in. He comes in from the desert. As he comes in from the desert, one writer says that in the palace at Shushan, they would linger there. They would lay back and the princes and the kings and the queens would visit Ahab and they would be sitting back and peacocks would somehow or another bring them whatever they were drinking on a tray. And they, they, they would pull the, 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 the tray the peacock would. And they would lie down and, and pick up a glass of whatever while the peacock strutted by. They had birds that, that was in cages on the wall and the, and the marble. Here comes, here comes Elijah from the desert. Sandals on. You could hear his sandals. Clapping against the marble floor. He walks in and he looks at Ahab and Jezebel and says, The Lord told me to tell you. It will not rain until I say so. And he turned around and he walked back out. And God shut up heaven. 
no rain. For three years, he came in. When he came in, he's introduced. He's introduced with power. He's, he's the kind of person that when you read about him, you read about the exploits of Elijah. Not long after that, he sent him by a brook to read, and the Bible says that he was fed by ravens, one in the morning, one in the evening. He went to a place called Zarephath, and he met a woman there. The Bible said that when he got to the place, he told the woman without being too polite, he said, make me a little cake. He said, I'm going to make me a cake and I'm going to die. My boys, and we're going to let you. He said, make me a cake first. He said it with, with, such, with such power, he didn't ask for it. It wasn't polite. He just said, make me a little cake. Sometimes you can't be polite with everybody. You just got to put folk in their place. When God has an anointing on your life, you ain't got time to play. And she made him a cake, and there were different other stories concerning Elijah. But there's something that happened on one occasion. They were looking for the rain to come in. Three years had expired, and he had a servant. He told the servant, he said, let's go up into the mountain and let's look and see if somehow or another, anything, is there any kind of indication about whether or not it's going to rain? He went down the first time. He came back. He said, I don't see nothing. The Bible said he went back seven times. Seventh time he looked at him. He said, I see a cloud. Size of a man's hand. The Bible talks about the dynamics of what happened, and they got down, and it started to rain. But something I want to share with you, and I'm almost done. In the 19th chapter, the 19th chapter, the scripture talks about something that I need to share with you. 19, I think it's the third verse. And when he saw that he arose and ran for his life, went to Bathsheba, watch this, which belongs to Judah, watch this, and left his servant there. Same servant. Ran seven times. He left him. Sometimes we have folk around us I hope I can say this that you got to leave he left him and the Bible said now you've got to go find somebody go anoint Haziah anoint him king and Jehu anoint him king he said and I've got somebody in your place his name is Elisha go and anoint him and put him in your place. The Bible said when he saw Elisha, he took off his mantle. He threw it at him. Follow me. He went back and told his father and mother and his servants goodbye. And he followed him. Now notice, the Bible said he's going to take your place. He's going to be the prophet in your place. History tells us it took 10 years. He had a prophecy that didn't come to pass for 10 years. Now this Elisha took the place of the servant that he left behind. He told him to stay and he did. Now, let me show you something. Let me show you something. I almost, I almost died. Second, second, second Kings. He talks to Elisha. That's all they've been through. He said, I got to go. God told me he was going to take me. 
So what he did, he took him down by Gilgal. He told Elisha, stay here. Elisha said, I'm not going to leave you. You need to have some folk around you that's not going to leave you. We, we got folk now that come to this church, be there for a little while, come to that church, be there for a little while. Some folk, some folk will come to your church because you've been consecrated. If they come to your church just because you're a bishop, they'll leave because you're a bishop. When you start walking in your anointing, it is an anointing you've got to walk in. He took him down to Gilgal. He said, stay here. He said, no, I'll never leave you. He took him down to, to, to Bethel. He said, stay here. He said, no, I'm not going to leave you. He took him down by Jericho. He said, stay here. He said, no, I'm not going to leave you. Went down by Jordan. He said, stay here. He said, no, I'm not going to. God is looking for somebody. That when you get fixed to somebody and connected to somebody, you are not going to leave them. Folk all over the place. They're trying to get an anointing. But you can't get an anointing running from place to place. You won't get an anointing going to this church and to that church. You got to stick in the church and stay in the church. I don't care what happened. You got to stay where God sent you. Just because you got mad about something, you got to stay. Fight through it. Praise God through it. Get your breakthrough in it. And, be, and then have a testimony to tell somebody. If it had not been for God, you wouldn't be here. He said, stay right here. He said, if you see me as I go up. Because he was getting ready to leave. I come back here to tell somebody. That God is getting ready to call some transitions. And if you get to the place where you can stick and stay for a little while. Look at your neighbor and say, stay for a little while. Don't be backing up packing, trying to leave and go nowhere else. Glory to God. Bless his holy name. And sometimes folk try to start a church. I had a young man came to me about 20 years ago. Her mama started a church. And I've had other folk to start churches and were relatively successful. This young man, I knew he was going to have the same folks that he had. I said, what you going to do in 10 years when nobody has joined your church? He said, at least I tried. I said, but did God tell you to try? You need God to tell you what to do and how to do it. I'd rather be with somebody doing something than be somewhere by myself, not doing anything at all. So I came to tell you that he stayed there. And the Bible said, while they were walking down by the river, the scripture says that a chariot came. Glory be to God. Swing low. Sweet chariot, and let me ride. Bible says the chariot came down and got Elijah. He threw his mantle back to Elijah. He said, I want a double portion of your anointing. Glory to God. I've had people to talk about the difference between Elijah and Elijah. Glory to God. They said that Elijah did not get his double portion. Because he didn't get twice as many miracles as Elijah had. But they forgot one thing. That when Elijah died, they took him down by the graveyard. Threw him in the grave. 
But there was another man in the grave. As soon as Elijah's body touched the other dead man, the Bible said he came back to life. He got double for what he was going through. Glory to God. As I take my seat, I need somebody in the house to realize that you're next in line for a blessing. I know you've been waiting for a mighty long time. I came by here to tell you, hang on in there. You got friends trying to tell you, I'm over so-and-so's church. You ought to come over so-and-so's church. But God didn't tell you to go over there. He told you to stay right here. Glory to God. And sometimes you got to praise your way through. No matter how you feel, you got to lift up your hands. Throw your head back. Give God's name. A praise out your belly because he's worthy to be praised. Somebody ought to holler glory to God. Somebody ought to holler hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. I know you're going through different things. But every time you go through something, break out in a crazy praise. Let them talk about you like a dog. You might be down to Kroger's. You might be at Publix or Safeway. Every time you hear about the devil trying to tell you, there ain't nothing going to work for you. Just give God a praise. Go down by the vegetables when you feel something. He's trying to depress you. Throw your hands up. Give God's name praise. Go down by the fruit. While you're down by the hour where the fruit is, give God a praise. No matter how you feel, he's worthy to be praised. Glory to God. When you feel like you're getting depressed, just break out in a crazy praise. Just start hollering, glory, 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 glory. Somebody here that know God is able, throw your hands up, throw your head back. Somebody shout glory. Yes, yes, yes. Shout glory. Glory to God. As we close this convocation, find yourself a praise partner. Look them in the eye. Say, God been good to me. What about you? Has it been good to you? If God been good to you, shout with me. Run with me. Dance with me. Holler with me. Scream with me. Somebody here, give God a praise out so better. He's worthy. Somebody shout worthy. Somebody shout worthy. Somebody shout worthy. got to go. Convocation 2021, we got to go. But before we go, somebody here, give God's name praise our children. Somebody shout, yes, 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 yes. Yes. Look at your neighbor, shout neighbor, dance with me, shout with me, roar with me. This is my last shout, 2021 convocation. Open up your mouth, give God a praise at your belly. He's a Put a shot on Put a dance on Look at your neighbor, shot neighbor. This dance is for 2020. For 2019, somebody praise him for when you did I never leave you. I never leave you. I never leave you. I never leave you. Somebody open up your mouth and shout. I never leave. I can't leave you. You're my father.
Father, I can't. I can't leave. Lift your hands before me. time and shout, I'll never leave you. to quit. I'm trying to quit, but I'll never leave you. I'm trying to quit. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul. Look at your neighbor and shout, my mind is made up.
I'll never leave you. I'll never leave you. I'll never leave you. He told him to stay. He said, I can't say I never leave you. I need you in my life. I'm so thankful to be here in 2019, 2020, 2019, they said in October 2019, they said I had stage four prostate cancer. The doctor told me, he said, if you'd have came earlier, I could have done something with you. My numbers were 7,000. He said, I don't even see how you live and how you walk in. And they told me, say, you got about four months. Four months came. to go to the hospital back and forth on top of that 2020 December I had COVID they were definitely talking about I wasn't going to make it I felt like I wasn't going to make it uh, other folks other folk around me was going to sleep. But God kept me awake. About the third day, I said the third day. About the third day, I started getting better. Getting my strength back. I couldn't hardly walk. But I can walk now. Glory to God. So I'm so glad to be here. Tonight. Convocation 2021. As we get out of here, I want you to give God the best praise you got. Open up your mouth, throw your head back, throw your hands up, and give God. to live. Turn to your neighbors and neighbor, get ready to live. Get ready to enjoy yourself. Get ready to live. Somebody shout, live! Look at somebody and shout, live! We got to live, Gary, we got to live! Get ready to live! This is what I want you to do. 
what, what we want to do is seal, we want to seal what we've given all week. I want you to seal it with this offering to watch this. Watch this. I want three people to get together. Three people on the pew. Three on each pew. Find, find three people on each pew. Find somebody beside you on your left and on your right. I want you to give with that person. Try to give between the three of you all. Try to give a hundred dollars. For the pastors and for the bishops, you give a hundred dollars individually. While you're getting your money together, shout live. When you give, I want you three to give together. Once you get your offering together, if you can't get together, get something together, but the three of you going to give together. Come on, stand to your feet with me right quick. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you how to give. Are you still getting it together? But just stand to your feet. Everybody stand. I don't want you to miss this. The blessing... It's not in what you give. The blessing is in how you give it. You got your three people together? You got three people? You got three people? You got three people? You got them? L lean over to both of them, the other two you got. Say, say, do you really know how to praise God? Tell, tell them, say, if you don't know, I'm going to teach you tonight. Come on, get it together, get it together. There's about to be an explosion in here. You, you was hollering. Live. That's what's about to happen to you. God's getting ready to open up some doors for you. I'm going to count to three. Stand to your feet. When I get to three, I want you to praise him like you've gone crazy. Because you are about to live one, two, three, live. your offering down to your left. You're going to come back and pick it up. Live! 